Hello, thank you so much for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. Today I'm going to do a deep dive into the Aquarius full moon of the 3rd of August at 11 degrees Aquarius, which is in conflict with Uranus, the planet of disruption. And there are some other supporting influences in the event chart, which are going to provide a backdrop for the next two weeks. Now, just before I go into that, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured. Please tap or click on the bell notification symbol. But also, because of the 13th zodiac sign controversy, have you checked out my in-depth deep dive video into this yet? If not, please see the link beneath this video. It's a myth. It's conflating two different astrological systems between tropical uh, Western astrology based on the seasons and Indian sidereal astrology, which does, in, does take into account the precision of the equinoxes. But I want you to feel really reassured that watching my video still makes sense for you. And if you've yet to watch that, please do so. Finally, if you would like to chat with me directly, you can do so on Twitter at Horoscope Ace or drop comments underneath this video, or if you've yet to catch the daily astrology and tarot video show with Elisa and I, which is proving really popular and great fun, please see the link beneath this video. You can also grab your free daily written horoscope every single day. So here we are, the event chart for the Aquarius full moon. On the 3rd of August at 3.58 p.m., Universal Central Time, which gives us uh, an ascendant at 12 degrees in Sagittarius. Now, what are the principal things about this chart and this event? Now, of course, as ever, we can focus on the moon's opposition to the sun. So the sun is in the sign of Leo, which, of course, is very charismatic. It's very much about warmth, but it's about the eye. It's about the need to focus on our own individual uh, interests and strands, whereas the moon in Aquarius is much more about how we connect to others. So finding a good balance between our individual uh, attention to our plans and also staying sensitive to other people, particularly our friends with uh, the moon in Aquarius, and perhaps our social situations, even if we are restrained by COVID, it's about working at keeping in touch but what really makes this full moon stand out, and it's rather ironic because it's a mirror of the Leo full moon, which happened in February of this year. And that is that the opposition between the two is dissected by the rather restless, potentially rebellious energies of Uranus. Now, in this particular chart, Uranus is in the fifth house of pleasures. And the sun is in the eighth house of where we're invested and where we have commitments to others. In a more practical sense, it's about finance, longer term finance. And the moon's in the part of the situation that's to do with our immediate resources. So I think Uranus uh, in a T-square with these two could make us more impulsive. We may want to splash out some cash to cheer ourselves up. We may want to... Um, be a bit more free, spirited, indulge ourselves, which is very Venusian, very Taurus, to indulge in pleasures. So calorific goodies, uh, with the sun in the eighth house, if there is something that is getting this down a little bit, of a bit more of a psychological nature, or is even a lack of money, or concern over resources, because of the impact COVID has had, uh, finding some kind of escape or an outlet can definitely come through Uranus. But also Uranus, of course, can make us very restless. And perhaps this full moon is asking us to reset something or it's bringing something into the open that we're finding a little bit difficult. If you do have children, it wouldn't be a surprise if there was something going, along, uh, going on with them that's proven to be unsettling. Now, what are the other influences that inform what this next two week period is going to be about? Apart from the sun's desire to basically do it its way, which is being challenged by the more democratic energies of the moon and that more rebellious energies of Uranus. Well, the big one that comes out for me is Mars's square with Jupiter. Now, ordinarily, this can be 
an aspect, particularly in a natal horoscope, which can give someone real drive and desire and a kind of bravery, really, to take on challenges and, and go for it. I think in this uh, event chart, Mars is in the fourth house of sensitivities and Jupiter is in the first house of the individual. So I think not trying too hard is probably a good thing. And if we do have a plan that will impact on those closest to us, we can't expect them just to fall in line because we're showing an immense amount of enthusiasm, which is what that right angle can generate. Now there's two more influences that really stand out for me. The first is that Saturn is in a direct opposition with Mercury. And Mercury, even though it is in Cancer, is going to emerge into the sign of Leo on the 5th of August, which after its 10-week sojourn through Cancer, we're all going to be absolutely celebrating. But in this chart, it too, al along with Saturn, is going across that eight second house axis, the same as the Sun and the Moon. So I think our concerns about resources, income, uh, managing uh, our finances, very much is borne out with this chart, but with the proviso that Uranus is kind of saying, but I want to do what I want to do, and I want to live in the moment. The other final influence involves uh, the North Node and Venus, which are together in the seventh house, which is actually really sweet. And there may be someone who does really, or is having an impact on our senses in a really positive way, but is that work, is this a person who's really very realistic? With Venus and the Node together in a quincunx, 150 degree angle, which is challenging, I think it's possible that our desire to just do what we want in the moment, which is coming through Venus, the Node, and Uranus us, is in contrast to the more uh, challenging earthing energies of the full moon in Aquarius and the opposition between Saturn and Mercury which are asking us to try to be as sensible as possible keep things in a kind of balance it's the temperance card I think that I kind of get from tarot uh, sort of really trying to find that uh, realistic balance where there's other influences that could see us being a bit more hedonistic, wanting to live in the moment, but also perhaps not being quite conscious of the wider impact that that could have. Now, please stay with me because next I'm going to share with you a detailed overview for each zodiac sign for this full moon for the next two weeks. So, this uh, full moon event for you, Aries, does show a conflict around the areas of your situation to do with your interactions socially or perhaps even around your love life. And because Uranus is in the mix, you may find yourself more impulsive. For example, you may have a desire to buy something that a partner feels that you should withhold from and that could bring out the rebel in you. But then again, if you're single, it could be just down to time management. Now, all of our social interactions have been hugely impacted by COVID. But with Mars in your sign, in a right angle to Jupiter, there's something about you at the moment that will want to go forwards with what suits your particular situation. But that could make you very impatient. And with Mercury and also Saturn in a direct opposition, perhaps you're seeing something or analysing something perhaps to do with a worldly situation, in a very dry way, which maybe does require a little bit more diplomacy and warmth from you in order to bring those closest to you into your way of thinking. So, choosing our words carefully is always important, but particularly with Mercury in opposition to Saturn. So it's not just the impulse that's going to come from Uranus, to follow your own desires. It is going to be how you get your message across to. Taurus, now with Uranus in your sign dissecting in a T-square, this particular full moon, I think it's a work-life balance issue that's really coming up for you, for me. Or is there someone from your past who keeps coming into your thinking? Entirely possible with Mars locked away in your 12th solar house. Perhaps there's some information that's come into light or has come to light that you're feeling really quite impassioned by. And this is making you want to have your voice heard. 
but with Mercury and Saturn in direct opposition, you could be more acerbic and a bit sharper about punching home your viewpoint. And just be aware that for the other person, that may feel a bit like an ouch moment. So if you are wanting to protect your personal situation, which is where the sun is in terms of your security, and where the moon is, is in the part of your situation that's to do with your worldly interactions, just be conscious that your emotions may be much closer to the surface. And even if you're generally quite a private type of Taurus, it would be much easier for you to just say how you feel, blurt it out, and with Mercury and Saturn in opposition, that could be, as I said, more uh, a more pointed comment in how it's perceived by the person you're having the discussion with. So a little bit of diplomacy probably will help to sweeten any pill that you do need to deliver. Now, Gemini, in your situation, of course, the sun and the moon are across your third and ninth house axes, which is very much about communication. The problem is that Uranus is, stop, is hinged in a very psychological part of your chart, and Uranus there is making you very restless. I think you've, in some way or another, felt a little bit on edge or unsettled, really, since the middle of May 2018. It came back, that sense, in March 2019 depending on exactly where the Sun is in Gemini for you. I feel that Uranus is putting you a little bit on edge at times. So uh, this next couple of weeks could see a battle of ideas or perhaps you're trying to reconcile yourself about uh, something in terms of your thinking and it could be about some kind of move, it could be a travel plan, it could be a business that you want to get off the ground. But if you are needing to discuss a financial matter Venus in your sign is not in a great angle to Saturn. So you need to make sure that any fact finding you do or any presentation that you put to a financial institution is really well thought through, researched and structured. Also, of course, your ruling planet Mercury is being challenged by Saturn too. So if there is a discussion to be had, it may be that someone's going to be resistant to what you're trying to get across and therefore try not to react to this with impatience if that should be the case. Now Cancer, for you the moon is in the part of your horoscope to do with the things you share where you're most invested, the 8th house. This is a very psychological location but of course the sun is in the sector of everyday resources. So I think that access for me is saying to you, balancing your income in the here and now with a little bit of an eye to going forwards is going to be the trick. But of course, because of COVID, if your income has dropped, it may be more about survival in the here and now rather than thinking so much about the longer term. And with Uranus jarring in a right angle to both these positions, you can't afford to be too idealistic about your resources. Now Mars is giving you a lot of assertiveness in its location in Aries and will do so through to the first week of January next year. But don't be overconfident if you are having a discussion with someone in a position of influence or even a partner. Your enthusiasm may be infectious for some but actually someone else could see you as just being totally unrealistic and maybe overconfident. So try to just bring things down to that basic foundational level of income and outgoings, doing your best with what you've got and trying to control any impulses that Uranus may throw up to sort of go off piste and be a bit more spontaneous and be in the moment. Now for you, Leo. It's all about relationships this full moon. The next two weeks could bring a relationship issue very much into the open. And it's because the moon's in the part of your horoscope to do with your interactions with others and the sun in your sign is giving you the desire to do things your own way. So it's about give and take, it's about collaboration, cooperation. If you can embrace those principles, there's a good chance that you can continue to move forward. The problem is, if there is something that's not been quite right for a while, Uranus T-squaring 
the moon and the sun suggest that if you have been feeling tense or someone's not really listening to you or you feel your rights are not being heard the chances are you could be much more outspoken than is normally the case in fact the rebel in you could really come out and it may be hard to resist this because mercury is in a very psychological location and will be through to the 5th of august now once that moves that's going to give you a sense of being in the present much more but on this event chart it does create a psychological dimension with Saturn so if you have been worried about something that hasn't been working and there has been a lack of communication and you felt inhibited then perhaps Uranus can be a good agent for you in forcing something out into the open also you could feel very resistant to just always being the solver of problems if people just think you're always going to deal with all the nitty gritty issues that could be something that you could resist not least because Mars is clashing with Jupiter and that's emphasizing your desire to be much more freedom loving Virgo now for you the full moon occurs in your sector of details of everyday structure the areas of life that you're generally very at ease with but the Sun's in the more psychological area and with Uranus in your ninth solar house that's a sector of freedom so if there is a chore a pattern of life or there is some unspoken tension or opposition to you perhaps at work I think Uranus could see you actually expressing how you feel in a way that is not normally your style but it will be difficult to bottle up whatever you may be suppressing also in a love relationship there's potential for real passion with Mars and Jupiter in a right angle great if there's someone that you're really drawn to you can reciprocate your interest but in an existing relationship if there's politics or possessiveness or jealousy I think Mars can see you wanting to shrug that off and live in a much more dynamic and exciting way also your ruler Mercury is challenged by the strict energies of Saturn this goes across your 5th and 11th house axes so this can be a real joy buster to be honest and if you are wanting to be more optimistic and more progressive I think what the Sun saying to you is take it all back to the core of your being how do you feel at a more psychological level then start making decisions of a more practical nature sometimes you can get so caught up with being always so practical you can deny that more feeling side of your nature so this full moon is asking you to challenge that somewhat now Libra Mars the planet of passion continues in your opposite sign and will do through till the 6th of January next year and that's clashing with Jupiter in your sector of home and family if there is somebody who's frustrating you then maybe this combination can see you being much more to the point just saying it how you feel asserting yourself being more competitive even as well even with a sibling or another family member but the full moon itself occurs in your sector of joys the fifth house the sun on the other side of the heavens is in the part of your situation to do with your social interactions now if you're spending a bit too much time with a partner and not connecting with your friends that could create some resentment amongst them but also the true the same can be true and vice versa so it's about finding a, a, a nice balance of your time management but with uh, Mercury in opposition to Saturn Saturn's making you feel potentially I think a little bit more defensive especially around uh, the home and emotional part of your existence if it just always feels that you're having to be the one that makes decisions and takes responsibilities I think Uranus then comes along and dissects the full moon and sort of makes you much more inclined to let something that's been deeply held within you come up to the surface and be articulated and Mars is saying yeah don't hold back you've been going through a period of time for some years really since Pluto moved into Capricorn in 2008 where it's been continual change around your emotions home and family life and once more this is a challenge with this cluster of energy in the sign of Capricorn in the guise of Saturn 
Jupiter and also Pluto. So Mars is bursting through in your sector of relating, asking you to be much more in touch with what you want to achieve rather than deferring to the needs of others. Scorpio, well, this full moon sees the sun high in the sky in your midheaven, all about work and success. But the moon is saying, but what about how you feel about things? If you're so caught up in trying to achieve something, status or to maintain your standard of living with COVID or to find a job, that's going to have some impact on your emotions. And with Uranus in your sector of relationships, if someone close to you is not understanding all the different plates you're trying to spin, then that could really frustrate you. And also with Mars, your ruler, clashing with Jupiter, that can see you um, being very brusque about expressing your point of view. Also, Saturn in opposition to Mercury means that if you're driving anywhere, if you have an appointment, there is the potential for some kind of delay, a glitch. Uh, something can just get a bit stuck. So do give yourself some extra time if you are moving around. Plan things very carefully and where possible do have a plan B. Now Sagittarius, of course the sun being in the sign of Leo is wonderful for you because it's all about expansion, it's all about excitement. But the moon is kind of saying that maybe there's parts of your everyday existence that you quite like or maybe someone close to you likes and if you are trying to be uh, more adventurous or show a more devil may care attitude it may be something closer to home that is slowing things down is money a worry for you if it is i think that opposition between mercury and saturn is going to potentially lead to some sleepless nights but also what the sun and the moon are saying is that if you need to flex and do something completely differently in order to overcome any financial issues, then do be open to the process. Because Uranus is actually saying to you, look, uh, this is a great time to be very open-minded about how you can structure your life in general. And if that does mean maybe a couple of different part-time roles or thinking about working in your own business, perhaps initially on the side, do be very, very open to that possibility. Now Capricorn, the sun for you is in a very transformational part of your situation, but just in terms of practicalities, the sun in the eighth house and the moon in the second house, the axis there is about immediate money, the second house, longer term and shared money, the eighth. But then we have Uranus dividing the two, and that's saying that maybe you could feel more impetuous. If you are someone who likes and enjoys a little bit of retail therapy, this is a full moon which could see you tempted to splash out over the next couple of weeks. But if you are, then just ensure it's something that has some kind of practical benefit to you. Otherwise, you may end up with a, a clear case of buyer's remorse. Also, with Saturn, your ruler, in direct opposition to Mercury, if there's someone close to you that's not listening to how you really feel, this could really frustrate you and maybe you feel that you need to be blunter with them and with Mars in your fourth house you could be less patient than usual with someone in the home sphere if they're not quite getting the direction of travel that you're following. Now for you Aquarius this uh, full moon is fascinating in a way because it's the direct mirror of what happened with the Leo full moon in early February this year and that too was dissected by the T-square with Uranus. So Uranus has continued to be a very important influence all year and it's in your sector of home and family and emotion and it's possible that things are changing there, you're seeing things in a different way. Maybe you're less concerned with that need for personal space that you've often had in the past, maybe you're really craving for it big time now. But this full moon just suggests that if there is a relationship where you feel that you're very attuned to the other person and they're not very attuned to you, then that is something that really could stick in your craw. And I think with Saturn, your co-ruler, in direct opposition with Mercury, you could find yourself in a much more um, punctilious mood, picking out little details that are not quite feeling right for you. But Uranus is 
uh, in the part of your horoscope to do with stability too and that's a bit of a counterintuitive thing because Uranus can be so rebellious and also with Mars in your sector of everyday expression if there is something that comes up from the depths that you feel is a point of principle that you need to share you likely will do over this next fortnight that brings us as always to you Pisces definitely not least but your sign uh, is influenced across the 12th and 6th house axes of your particular situation which means that the moon therefore is in a very psychological zone is there someone at work that you're not quite sure about if there is a trust issue it could come up over this next two weeks maybe the trust issue is in a relationship maybe this full moon is reminding you that if you're too focused on the everyday practicalities of life work getting shopping just going through the routines and you're not allowing your emotional being to have its role in your life in a significant enough way well this full moon has the potential to cause you quite a lot of tension over the next couple of weeks even some headaches or migraines or you could feel a bit irritable because Uranus can create this kind of electric energy and therefore in the third house which does influence our nervous system interacting with the sixth and twelfth houses the body and the emotions that's saying to you look be more conscious of how you feel about things sometimes you can be so sacrificing you do lose yourself in the process but there is that role of Mars too Mars is saying that if you get together with a friend in a right angle with Jupiter you could go out and actually have a very jolly time and even if you do splash some cash maybe spend uh, 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 a lot of the time really enjoying some calorific goodies don't beat yourself up about it I actually think it could do you the world of good but with Saturn in an opposition to Mercury in your sector of play you've got to give yourself permission to get off the merry-go-round have a bit of a rest and just have some relaxation because it will be really rejuvenating for you it's been a real pleasure being with you please don't forget to check out that Ophiuchus 13th zodiac sign video that's beneath if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one video uh, consultation with me please see my testimonials below if you'd like to ascend into serious astrology without um, spending too much money initially you can check out my very affordable range of reports below 30% off for a year ahead forecast and a character analysis but for now stay safe take care and good luck